All righty, welcome to Five Good Minutes of PPL Live. It's Gino the Gent here with a very, very special guest. I have Pantheon Cup finalist, Squad Underestimated on the line. Squad, what's up? How you doing, man? What's good? What's good, PPL? No, nah, it's, it's, it's great, man. We got the 2019 season coming up. Everybody's really excited. But uh, we wanted to get you in this interview, and we wanted to talk about your favorite memory from the 2018 season. What was that for you? Uh, my favorite memory would probably be uh, taking out the mean machine with a coach and a kicker. Came down to the wire, and uh, a coach and a kicker don't always get you a win. So I guess to have them give me that win was probably my favorite moment. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Definitely, definitely. That was a great memory. I mean, I remember uh, sitting there watching uh, the ending of that game, watching the Saints hold on to that win for you. Uh, knocking out the Mean Machine, who had two Saints on his roster. So that was an exciting moment from last season and uh, set the table for uh, Pantheon Cup 10. Uh, but moving forward, uh, what has you most excited about the 2019 season? Mm, I was one step, one step from the champ. So I think my team is still young. I built them all. I'm building a young team every year. I'm drafting more rookies and trying to get that long-term dynasty going down so um I'm, i mean i like everything that's going on with me i think the most exciting thing is getting to that final step though and i think i got a real good chance to get there so. awesome awesome and um speaking of you know uh the the talent that you've acquired over the last couple of years you've probably been one of the best teams in the league at getting uh fresh good talent um, what keeper has you uh, do you think is going to have the biggest impact? And what new guy that you drafted uh, do you think is going to have the biggest impact on your roster? Well, uh, the new um, well the people that I have on my team, I can say a couple different people, but honestly, I think a, a sleeper impact on my team is going to have to be Tyler Lockett. I mean, I think it's given that McCaffrey's going to do his thing, and it's given that uh, Bark is going to do his thing. Um, and I, of course, I got feeling over there, but I think I'm, I'm excited to see the impact that Tyler Lockett has taken over over there for a number one receiver. Could go good, could go bad, but I think it's going to lean towards the good. So my newest Definitely. member, I mean, newest member, I don't know, I was kind of iffy with my draft, but I, I do like that I got another young running back, so I'd have to say uh, Philip Liv, uh, Lindsay, and I really do love course my boy Gordon that I picked back up probably reached a little bit early for him but I got a lot of faith in that man so right one right of those, one of those two okay okay so you would say uh Gordon and uh Philip Lindsay were the two draft picks that you would expect to have a big impact you did pick them pretty high so I'm sure you're hoping that they would uh have a big impact and then of course uh Tyler Lockett who with the Doug Baldwin retirement is going to have that whole receiving core he's going to be the the main man in that receiving core him and Russell Wilson have a pretty good rapport, so, uh, and he's a big play threat, so he may be a guy that can, you know, give you a whole day's worth of production in, you know, one or two plays. So, uh, those were those are some very uh, big, uh, impactful guys that uh, we're going to see uh, shining uh, just as soon as this week. Talk to us about Week One against the Argonauts and and the overall rivalry you guys have had throughout the years. You guys are the longest tenured Alpha teams. Uh, what was it like to uh, see them again in the playoffs and? Uh, see them again in week one these guys are always it seems like uh in your uh, rear view mirror well in my opinion uh you gotta find that one team you gotta find that one team that you you have that grudge with that you ain't got that team you don't like or you've been fighting for so long then you ain't ever gonna beat that team and i, I love the matches between the argonauts and me just because it's one of those teams that i feel if i beat them I'm doing good things, you know what I mean? I mean, Definitely. you can beat any other teams, but <clears throat> the Argonauts have always been deep in stack, and so it's a, it is a tough team to beat, regardless of what people got to say about it. They're one of the hardest teams to beat, and so when I play them, it's most exciting because, you know, I'm going to beat them. I got to beat them. And <laughs> well, when that happens, it, it's, it's exciting. Well, you know, definitely, and you were able to do that last year. You swept them in the regular season. Uh, and and really showed out on Thanksgiving. You get them again on Thanksgiving after this matchup. Uh, what what do you think is going to be the difference for you guys uh, this season, though, uh, uh, as far as getting that win? Uh, I think it's just going to, um, like I said, I think the difference is going to be I got more of a bench now. Uh, I got, you know, I got some people that 
um, I can rely on if I got certain people out. Um, I've always been a little bit, I got my starters and that's about it. I got to go through the waiver wires. I got to find people to fill in for my bye weeks and it, it's been tough doing that. Bad, good and bad calls and so I think this year I don't have to hit the waiver so much and I think I got players all around that I can, that can help me win games. Awesome, awesome. Thanks squad for the interview. Uh, good luck week one and going into the season. Uh, PPL Live, uh, five good minutes. Thanks, bro. No problem, man. Thank you, and good luck to everybody. Let's get it. All righty. All right, now is our interview with Squad Underestimated. You know, segueing us into the prestige matchup of the week, Argonauts Squad Underestimated. Argonauts roll in with the first-round draft pick, Josh Jacobs. Squad come in, obviously, with Philip Lindsay here. Uh, but, I mean, I'm looking around. Squad's got some great matchups. Uh, Saquon Barkley's going to get the ball fed to him. And I like Christian McCaffrey against the Rams' run defense. What, what are you thinking there, Ulysses? I don't know. Uh, I think that the Argos put together a very strong draft night. I mean, they got, they got Drew. It's, it's looking vintage championship here. Nick Chubb, Josh Jacobs, really young uh Options. I mean, you look at Julio Jones. Mm-hmm. I, I'm looking across over here. I don't know about the Philip Lindsay start. I don't know why Ben Roethlisberger isn't in the lineup right now. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure about Kirk Cousins. Right, right, right. Um, so Lindsay, I think that that's going to be a tough matchup. And I mean, you're you're starting the Rams defense, yet you're starting Christian McCaffrey. I don't understand. Okay. Um. I just think that uh, there's a couple style moves here that uh, that the squad's gonna have to make. I mean, maybe they're 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 riding the high. I wouldn't blame them, but uh, I think the Argos they're they're stacked. This is a good week for them. Uh, let's not let's not ignore the elephant in the room here, Ulysses. I mean, come on, no Zeke. I don't think the Argo have a good. I think that uh, squad has come up to the point now that hey, if you don't have all your guns ready. Underestimated could get at you. I got I got underestimated winning if there is no Zeke this week. I got underestimated in an upset, uh, and I say there is no Zeke this week. One twenty eight uh, to one twenty one. Uh, I'll give it to the Argos. I think that they're gonna do just fine. Uh, Drew on Monday night. He likes to play in those prime time games. I'm gonna say the Argos one thirty two squad one seventeen. Okay. Uh, moving on to our next matchup in the PPL, we got the new guys, the Skulls, taking on only for the boss. All right, the Skulls, they, they made a little noise. They, they, they made the, uh, the trade for Le'Veon Bell, ensuring that they got their guy uh, with that number one pick. And then they flipped that number 10 pick uh, into Mike Williams, an up-and-coming young wide receiver. I mean, as far as team building goes, I really like what the Skulls are doing here. And, and, and I, like, I like their chances in this matchup. Uh, I like the uh, Le'Veon Bell start. I love Devonta Freeman coming back from that injury. And um, obviously, you can't ignore Aaron Jones uh, even going up against that tough Chicago uh, defense. What, what are you seeing in this matchup? Uh, obviously, he's going against that Kansas City uh, front line. Yeah, I mean, Kansas City, uh, I mean, they're stacked this year. Uh, I think that um, the Skulls have got their hands full, but... Honestly, I think that the Skulls made the right uh, play. Uh, I know there's a lot of chatter around the league okay. that Le'Veon was uh, uh, on the market. Um, obviously, the Argos got that thing for their bucks, uh, getting the number one draft pick. And I mean, it was it was a it was a big uh, decision for the Skulls, and uh, I mean, really, will will know how uh, smart it was this first week. Um, I mean, he, he was really in rebuilding mode. Okay. Every time you, you got the first traffic, you, you need to get a guy. Uh, Le'Veon has shown he's been that guy in the past, but, I mean, we haven't seen him play ball in two years, basically. So True. I think that uh, he could he could potentially get at him. Um, I think that the Jacksonville matchup is a little bit of a sneaky matchup for KC. Okay. Um, I think that that defense can, can maybe get at uh, get at uh, Mahomes. Mahomes. Um, I mean, and... You know, there's just so many eggs in that basket that if it doesn't crack all the way, then uh, only in the only for the boss can be in trouble real quick. So I think that uh, as far as defense and uh, coach, I mean, 
Uh, the Skulls are in good position. I think Robbie Gould is a good pickup. Yeah. So I think that all around, like, I mean, that the one big question mark for them this season is going to be Le'Veon Bell. He's number one draft pick worthy. And uh, I'm excited to see if we're going to see it uh, Sunday. I got the skulls. I got the skulls getting that getting that big win to uh, start the season off one twenty eight to about one fifteen. Mm, yeah, yeah. I was gonna I was gonna put it pretty tight too. I went uh, skulls one twenty five uh, only for the last one twenty one. I think this one's gonna be uh, our nail biter. All right, moving on to our next matchup in Omega Conference Blood Feud. We've got Patty's Twins taking on the United Players, the Destroyers. Uh, the United Players of the Destroyers did not have the best selection of keepers, but then when you look up at their uh, projection, I mean, the, their keepers are some of their best projected guys. I'm looking at carry on Johnson, who people are expecting to have a big impact. Uh, James White, who uh, obviously, uh, depending on the Patriots' uh, game plan, he can be star. And then obviously guys like, you know, Cooper Cup and, um, you know, uh, Derrick Henry, who, had, who closed the season very, very strong. Uh, Patty's twin side, Aaron Rodgers, uh, has a very, very tough matchup, but he opens the season, and, and sometimes those matchups are, are magical for a guy like him. Uh, David Johnson gets the, the rookie QB. Uh, maybe that'll open up that offense for him. Uh, I like the Duke Johnson Jr. Uh, play. That's very intriguing. And I, I like Patty's twins' uh, roster all around. I thought they did well in the draft, getting guys like Austin Eckler, Robert Woods, guys that they can insert into this matchup and really make an impact. What do you think, Ulysses? Uh, I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking the United players might do something. Oh. Um, I, I surprise! Think that, uh, surprise! Surprise! That, well, I mean, <laughs> I think that this, this Tom Brady, James White combo. I mean, everybody's been giving Sonny Michelle the love. Okay. Uh, I think. I think that that that's an intriguing matchup. I agree with you with Carry On, Chris Godwin. I mean, that that tandem between him and Mike Evans. Uh, Jimmy should have a field day in San Francisco. Uh, Cooper, I'm liking. I mean, honestly, I think that the Chiefs, Chiefs are going to win that game. Uh -huh. um, I think that that Patriots, uh, again, I, I'm not so sure about this defense. I think uh, there's a lot of question marks here, but look, you know, we've seen the United States do a lot of things, and they've done a lot worse than this. Right. So um, I, I think that they actually did a, did, did a, a get-right move. But when I look at the other side, I mean, it's Aaron Rodgers. I, I'm not sure anymore. Okay. Uh, it, I mean, new coach. It'll be interesting to see. Okay. Uh, uh, David Johnson. I mean, we gonna learn a lot if if he can if he can open the field up for Murray or if Murray can get it uh, prevent them from stacking the box and vice versa. I don't like Duke Johnson. Uh, I I think that I mean he's wow. a great addition to Houston. I think that they're still mourning the loss and. I mean, they've been doing some weird stuff out there. I'm not sure that, that that's where I would uh, go. Okay. He ends a great pick. Antonio, we'll see uh, how it looks. Um, Hopefully those feet are healed up for I, You know, this is that weird shit. And maybe it doesn't wow. impact Antonio. But, I mean, for me, it, it's a head scratcher. <laughs> uh, Who do you got? very one-dimensional, in my opinion. Um, I'm gonna give it to the to the twins, but I think that they they get by here. Okay. Um, I'm gonna give it to the twins. One fifteen UP. I'm gonna give it to them like one oh nine. Okay, I got Patty's twins rolling. I think that they open up uh, with a splash, and I think AB uh, makes a big statement on Monday Night Football. I got the twins winning one thirty one to the United players one fourteen. And moving on to the next matchup, uh, we go into the Alpha Conference, the Baby Gas Team taking on the Mean Machine. I honestly liked the Baby Gas team draft. I think that they uh, did that in the uh, most. And okay. I actually think that they got him. I mean, and I just talking about Sonny Michelle, but I think that, that where he was drafted, they got him for value. Okay. Um, in that first round, um, a lot of rookies, I mean, at least two rookies taken before him, and Sonny's the guy that proved that he can get the numbers. Um, and I think that he needed to do that with the question marks surrounding Melvin Gordon. I mean, maybe one of the better guys in the position, and we don't know what's going to happen there. Right. Um, so I think the baby cats can do a good job in their draft and, and addressing their issues. Uh, mean Machine thinks that they're good without a coach. Uh, so I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, um, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm looking <laughs> at the, the lineup. There's a lot of question, question marks around uh, Beckham, Amari Cooper. Right. Uh, I think Damian Williams. I think that uh, the pickup of um, 
our boy McCoy out there, I mean, that was interesting to me. Right, and obviously. With the history with Reed, if, if it's not going right with these other guys, I, I expect him to get in the lineup real quick. Definitely. Um, so, so I don't know. I think that uh, Me Machine still has some moves to go. I don't think this is his final lineup yet. Um, but as it, as it stands, uh, I think I got the baby gas team. Uh, 110 to 99. Oh, wow, wow. Mean Machine is uh, uh, struggling to score there. I actually thought that the Mean Machine should have uh, addressed running back. Uh, they, they they did it. They didn't really ju- – I think they went with Miles Sanders. I, I didn't really like that pick. I did like the Matt Breida pick, but that's all dependent. So so we'll see about that. Uh, I thought that they could have went uh, maybe Marlon Mack. Uh, I think that he was available right where they picked, but I'm, I'm not sure exactly. Um, but I, I did like the Carson Wentz pick. I think he's a really good quarterback. Um, and uh, I, I do like that their nucleus still is intact with Michael Thomas, Odell, and uh, Alvin Kamara. And I think that's going to be just too much for the uh, the baby gas team. Uh, slight upgrades, but I thought they should have kept Robert Woods. That was a huge mistake on their end. I think that they pay in this matchup. Mean Machine rolls 121 to 109. And moving on uh, to our final matchup in the Omega Conference. We got the Omega Conference champions, uh, the Gaff Attack, taking on Appease the Gods. Give me, give me what you got on this one, Ulysses. I know you got a lot of uh, inside sources on this one. Well, this one's intriguing. I uh, love the young quarterback matchup. Uh, Baker Mayfield, Lamar Jackson. Um, I mean, uh, you, you know, you can't underestimate the power that uh, the gap brought back. Right. Um, I mean, he's strong everywhere. Right. Uh, but the Marlon Mack pick was a good pick. Um, and uh, I thought that Philip Rivers was also a very good draft pick. The, the Baker Mayfield uh, pick is, I think, the jury's still out. And he drafted Bake uh, pretty early. That's the only point that I, I have to make there. Uh, but other than that, I think that this team's foolproof. And when I say foolproof, I mean F O O L foolproof. I don't think uh, you know an idiot can mess this lineup up. I think that the gaff rolls against the of the gods. Uh, I did like that ATG went and got David Montgomery. He could be a star in the making. But um, I mean. Some of the guys that they're returning, Edelman's a great returner, Mike Evans is a great returner, and I did like the Hunter Henry pick, but this firepower they're going up against this week is way too much. Like I said, uh, the gaff should roll uh, into week one and get some revenge on the ATG, who was the only team that took a piece off of them. I got the gaff rolling 131 uh, to 118. Yeah, I've got, I've got the gap uh, leaving no doubt this week. I've got him going 142, a piece of God, 113. Uh, I think that the gap ultimately, again, just proves you strong. Got you, got you, got you. All right, and uh, that wraps up PPL Live. Uh, the Ulysses S. Hate and uh, Gino the Gent signing off.